accounts and how a firm can build succession plans and how a firm can really build out its own infrastructure. And I'd love to hear your story about, you know, taking the firm from generation to generation and in the context of succession, where do you all go from here? What kind of plans are you making? You are a part of something bigger than yourself. And so we give everyone the freedom to be creative and innovative in our company, but within our framework. We don't tell everybody you do step one, two, three, four. No. Here is the idea around what you're supposed to be doing. Now it's up to you to figure out how to get there. And I really like this culture in our in our company because it brings out of people their creativity and their innovation. Also, it allows them to grow as a manager, to make decisions, to make mistakes, and to understand why, you know, something worked well, why something didn't work so well. And as a result, we're creating our leaders for the future. We're looking at leadership on management, organizational structure side, and then ownership. How does that work? Um, We don't have it all figured out. But, of course, I'm not hanging up my heels anytime not soon. Not just that. <laughs> you talked a bit about the minority women business enterprise, those initiatives that you see, that you've seen happen over the last several years. I know that you consult your clients in the area of compliance regulation as well as DNI. So what sorts of concerns do you see clients and just the overall population in the marketplace as having? And what are your, what's generally your advice? How do you consult them in terms of that sort of area as it relates to DNI? diversity and inclusion. People are accepting the fact that diversity makes money. So we are, <laughs> our, our country is built on entrepreneurship, capitalism, and the minute that, you know, capitalists understand that they are going to uh, increase their profits by diversity, they jump on it. And the reason This is happening. It's because now you're getting more creative ideas from people that have a different perspective, whether they're women. We're seeing women in the construction industry tearing it up because they are so attentive to detail and they are finding faster, better ways to um, progress things in the construction industry. What sort of resources, if I'm thinking about this in a step-by-step process, I have a business, I'm designing a governance plan for the first time, I need to think through succession, I need to think through my company's culture and the mission, I need to think through how I'm engaging the board. What sort of resources do I need? Is this um, an issue of, you talked about money, so how can we um, reward our people and really get them to buy into what we're doing here? Do I need external consultation? What resources do I need to take those steps to really build a good governance plan? As a business owner, you are so busy working in the business that you forget about working on the business. So as I've decided to expand my national brand, and you know, there's a reason behind that too, I've been drawn into a lot of panel discussions. And this year, one actually was on succession planning. (laughs) And so I began to examine where I was with my business. But at the same time, of course, the Internet is the first place you go. And that's where I found this great um, article. Actually, it was a guide, a 100-page guide uh, from Deloitte. Um, But from there... I have now engaged consultants. I, you know, am doing an RFP right now um, because now I have a framework of what I want to do. I know that before I meet with them that I need to understand what I want. I need to understand, you know, the leadership role. I need to have the basis for them to start work. Um, And so, yes, it's going to require some money. Because, you know, you get what you pay for. And I'm fine with that because you cannot um, put your head in the sand and act like this is not going to happen. Because there is a succession coming whether you plan for it or not. 
And, you know, that's the bottom line. What shifts are you seeing in terms of sustainable building, sustainable construction, lead and green building? Are you seeing some things now happening that you didn't see a few years ago? And what do you expect to see coming down the road there? That is a way of life for designers and and in construction. And it's been driven, I think, by the consumers because the owners are saying, you know, we want to make a difference um, on the uh, green footprint of the United States. The developers, so the uh, individuals who are renting uh, uh, apartments, buying condos, they gravitate to buildings that are designed green. 